Hello Grade 11s, today we'll be talking about data handling. Now up until Grade 10 you did pie charts, bar graphs, pictograms, you know all those easy things and then Grade 10 we introduced you to five number summaries which still wasn't too complicated. Now in Grade 11 we start talking about box and whisker plots, interquartile range as well as standard deviation. This lesson we'll be revising all of those concepts you need for your Grade 11 exams. Let's revise what those concepts are. And we'll be going through mean, mode, quartiles, range, interquartile range, five number summaries, box and whisker plots, standard deviation using a table, and calculator programs to calculate standard deviation. While we go through these, I urge you to take notes. Try and find ways to remember things because they're going to ask you these words in the exams to find the mean, and you need to know what that is. Let's go through them and define all of them. The first one, mean. Now, we, whenever I talk to my classes about mean, I talk about our maths averages being mean. So if you can remember, the maths average was mean. You can remember this. Mean is when you find the average of a set of data. You find that by adding the data together and then dividing by the number of sets of data. Mode is the most frequently occurring score, and I remember that by mode being the beginning of most, most frequently occurring. The next one, quartiles. Now if you think of quartiles, quartiles is when something is divided into four. In the same way, quartiles divides a set of data into four. Before you just go into quartiles though, you first have to arrange the numbers into numerical order. So that means counting order, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. If there are any doubles of the numbers, you need to write those doubles down as well. The way we find the quartiles is we first find the median. Now remember, there's small, there's medium, and there's large. And that's how you can remember what medium is. Medium is the middle one. So you look for the medium by crossing off the numbers until you find the middle point. If there are two numbers in the middle, you add them together, divide by two to find the midpoint of those two numbers. In order to find the lower quartile, you find the middle point between the median and the first number. And if you're looking for the upper quartile, you find the midpoint between the median and the last number. Now you'll see over here, it explains that if there are two numbers that constitutes the Q2, then you add them together and you find the average, there we go, the average of the two middle numbers. When we go through our questions, we'll find this and so we'll be able to practice the skills. So don't stress about it now, you will see how to practice it later. Let's move on to the next piece. Now range. Range is the difference between the largest and the smallest value. So it's a subtraction problem. There we go, the largest minus the smallest will give you the difference in range. The interquartile range is the difference between Q3 and Q1. The five number summary describes the quartiles as well as the minimum, the maximum, and the other two. So you find the lower quartile, just as you had found it before. You find the median, just as you had found it before, as well as the upper quartile. This five number summary are measures of dispersion, and we use them to plot a box plot. So in order to do a box plot, you need to first know how to find your five number summary. Box and whisker plots. Box and whisker plots are exactly how they have been described in the name. You've got a box in the middle with whiskers on the side. The whiskers are the two maximum and the minimum value and the box 
are the lines, are formed by the lines where the quartiles are. So your first quartile forms the first line, your second quartile the second, and your third quartile the third line. Let's see how they're plotted. Box and whisker plot is graphical representation of the five number summary. Here is our minimum, here is our lower quartile, our medium, our upper quartile, and our maximum. The lower quartile can also be described as Q1, the median as Q2, and the upper quartile as Q3. First quarter, second quarter, third quarter, and of course the fourth quarter goes to the maximum. Let's move on. Standard deviation using a table. Personally, I love standard deviation because it's an extremely complicated looking formula. However, it's actually quite easy once you know how to interpret it. Firstly, that sigma sign just means add it all together. It's a fancy way of looking clever. But as long as you know that sigma means add it all together, you're going to be fine. Let's go through the other symbols. Over here, we have x with a line on top of it. Now that means your average or your mean. So you're going to find your mean of the data and subtract it from every individual piece of data. Individual piece of data. Then you're going to square it. Now this process is called finding the variance. So this over here is the variance. Once it's been squared and added together, we find the average of that square rooted. Why? Because there's a squared. And that will give us the standard deviation. Now, standard deviation isn't too difficult to understand. If you think of a class where you're exceptionally bored, you're all throwing paper into the middle of the classroom, there are going to be people who get it right on target, and then there are going to be people who are going to throw it further away from the target. Now, standard deviation is the average distance that each piece of paper gets thrown away from the target. So let's say you have Sally who can't really throw. She throws two meters away from the target, but then all of the other people get it pretty much on target. Now, Sally's standard deviation with everyone else will be factored in, and then you'll have this radius around the target that will form your standard deviation, where most pieces of paper fall. Let's go through how to use and do it with the calculator. The calculator we're going to use today is the Casio FX82ES+. Personally, it's my favorite calculator, as it does everything I want. Now, as we're going to go through it, I'm going to do it on the calculator over here so that you can see what happens. The first thing we need to do is press mode. You'll see there are three options. One for comp, where all of your normal maths is done. Then stat, which is what we want. And table for when you're doing functions. Now stat, we press number two. And then we have various options. We want number one, which is one minus variable. And we press it. And then we enter data points. Let's make up a couple. So we'll say that Sally threw it two meters away. Uh, John threw it five meters away. Mpo threw it one meter away. And Steve got it right on target. So there are our different paper throws. We press AC to say that we're finished. And then we press Shift and Stat to get to our next stage. Now we're going to select number four for variable. And then we're going to select number three. And we press equals to get the standard deviation. Now 1.87. This measurement, 1.87, represents the standard deviation of each piece of paper from the target. So as the different people threw to the target, most of them landed within a standard deviation or a radius of 1.87 meters of the throw. There are other calculators that do stats, such as the Sharp calculator. And if you want to find out how to do that, either consult the user manual or these notes. Let's move on to our first question. Now, question one says, the results for Argentina for the past 14 World Cup tournaments are recorded in the table below. You've got matches played, you've got wins, you've got draws, losses, goals for and goals against. You've also got the different years that these tournaments have been played, starting from 1930 in Uruguay right up until 2006 in Germany. The first column, matches played, would be the number of matches the team has played, and so on and so forth. So the number of wins they've had in each tournament would be in this one. And remember, we're talking about Argentina here. 
the number of draws, the number of losses, the number of goals for, and the number of goals against. Let's use this data to answer the first question. Determine the quartiles for the matches played. Now, in order to determine the quartiles for the matches played, we first have to arrange the data into numerical order. In other words, we have to put it into counting order. It is a bit laborious, and you need to make sure that you get every piece of data down. Otherwise, it does affect your answer. Let's look first for the lowest set of data, and that's 1. So I'm going to cross it off as I write it down over here. So 1. The next piece, are there any 2s? No, but there are three threes. So one, two, three. And let's write them down over here. One, two, and three. Let's see if there are any fours. Ah, here's a four. And here's a four. That's two fours. Let's write that down. So on and so forth. Let's see. One, two, three, four fives. two, three, four fives. Let's see if there are any sixes. One six. And sevens. These must have been successful years for Argentina. That's three sevens. Now just to double check ourselves, let's count the number of numbers we've written down and the number of ones there are. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. There are 14 numbers down. And how many tournaments are there? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So we have got all the data down. Now I'm going to teach you a trick that someone else taught me once about finding the median and the interquartile range. You first start by crossing off in one direction. So one on this side, one on that side, just in the one direction. This is to find the median. Remember, small, medium, large. The median is in the middle. And there we go. We've ended between two numbers. So we need to find the midpoint between those numbers. Now, technically, the calculation for that is 5 plus 5 divided by 2. We all know that answer is going to be 5. So our Q2, or our median, is 5. Now the nice thing about this method is now as I look for the Q1, I cross off in the other direction. So one on that side, one here. Front and back, front and back. And now we do actually have a middle number. This number will be our Q1. And the same for Q3. Front and back, front and back. Keep on going. And we have a number in the middle. And this is our Q3. The question asked for the quartiles of the match paid, played. So our quartiles are Q1 is equals to 3, Q2 is equals to 5, and Q3 is equals to 6. Just because we're here, we might as well state that our minimum number is 1 and our maximum number is 7. The question doesn't actually ask for it. You're only going to get three marks for those three quartiles, but I'm sure these numbers will come into play later. Let's go on to question B. Question B asks us, determine the quartiles for the wins. That means we're now working with this column over here. And if we look down, we had a successful year in 1978 in Argentina. It's probably because it was a home tournament. And let's start by writing it in numerical order. Let's look for the least amount of wins first. And that is zero in Italy. So in 1934, there were zero wins. Let's go back up and look for ones. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Four ones. Let's go up and look for twos. One, two, three. Any more twos? Yes. Four twos. And let's write them down. 
two, three, four. Threes. One, two, two threes. One and two threes. Fours. Here's a four, and seeing as we're here, we might just do as well do five and six at the same time. So there's one four, one five, and one six. Let's count them to make sure we have 14. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Good. Let's find the quartile range, uh, or the quartiles. Front, back, front, back. Carry on, carry on going. Don't forget where you've started. So if you start at the front, you must always end at the back. Front, back, and you see that's what I mean. Over there, we've got the first quartile, or the second quartile at least, between two and two. Now everyone knows that two plus two divided by two is going to give you an answer of two, but let's demonstrate it just in case someone does get confused later. So this is our second quartile. Let's find our first quartile front and back again. And now we have one stuck in the middle. And this is our first quartile. And our third quartile by going all the way through. And we end up with a three in the middle again. And this is quartile three. So if we're going to write it down, we have Q1 is equals to one. Q2 is equals to two and Q3 is equals to 3. It's got quite a nice ring to it, 1, 2, 3. Now our maximum and our minimum, once again over there, our max, oh sorry, our minimum is equals to 0 and our maximum is equals to 6. Okay. Question B was also for three marks. So they're not looking for the minimum and the maximum, but they are looking for the quartiles. And we found them by first dividing the set of data in half and then dividing each of those halves in half again, hence quartiles. Let's move on to C. C says, determine the quartiles for the goals scored against Argentina. So let's go to the column that says against goals scored against Argentina and start making our numerical list. Let's look for the lowest numbers. We've got a three, but then we've got a two. And two seems to be our lowest number. So let's start by putting down two twos. Two and two. I did see some threes just now. There's the three. That's one three. Can we see any more? Yes, two and three. Three threes, two twos and three threes. I wonder how many fours there'll be. Let's look. One, two, three. No, only three fours. The pattern has gone away. So we've got two twos, three threes, and three fours. Then fives. There's a five. That's one five. Sixes and sevens. Here's a six, that's one six and one seven. Six and seven and a nine, a 10 and an 11. Nine, 10 and 11. Remember to check that you've got the right number of data pieces. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. We needed fourteen pieces of data and we've written fourteen down. Let's find the quartiles now, starting with the front and the back. Okay. Now remember that these are used to draw box and whisker plots. And once again, we've ended in between two numbers. And it's quite an easy one again, because four plus four divided by two is going to give us the answer four. If it had landed between four and five, we would add four plus five divided by two and then get an answer of four and a half, and that would be our Q2. But of course, it landed between the fours, so that is our Q2. Let's find our Q1 by going from the front and the back again. 
And here we have our three, which is Q1. And on the other side, let's carry on going, and we have our seven, which is Q3. Now, remember it's three marks, so they just want you to write down neatly somewhere that Q1 is equals to three, Q2 is equals to four, and Q3 is equals to seven. Okay. Now that we're done with arranging all of the data, let's see what the next question has in store for us. Question D. Question D says, draw a box and whisker plots for the matches played by Argentina. So the matches played by Argentina, the wins, and the goals scored against Argentina. Remember, against, it's pretty important because we've got goals scored for and goals scored against. We have done box and we have done all of the work we need to do this question in previous questions. So let's start with matches played by Argentina. We'll go back to question 1A, where we had our minimum was seven, one, our maximum was seven, our quartile one was three, five, and six. So let's write that down so that we don't forget it. Our first part, our minimum, was 1. Our Q1 was 3. Q2 is 5. Q3 is 6. And our maximum is 7. This means when we set up the number line, we're going to need our first point to be before one and our last point to be before seven. Let's start by drawing a line. Ah, I draw beautifully, don't I? And let's put in some values. Now the number before one, let's make it zero. Then we have one. Ideally, you want this to be equally spaced Three, what number are we going up to? Let's go up to number eight. Five, six, seven, eight. And let's start by plotting our minimum. Our minimum happens at one, so we do a little dot at one. Our maximum starts at seven. These will form our whiskers. Our Q1 will be at three, and we draw a line down to represent Q1. Q2 will be at five, we draw a line down, and Q3 will be at six, we draw a line down. Now all of these should be drawn using a ruler. And we join up our whiskers, and there we have a beautiful looking box and whisker plot. The next part, Actually, let's talk about this a little bit. You'll see that there's a large gap on this side of the box, on the left-hand side of the box. And this means that it is skewed to the left or negatively skewed. Just a little tidbit. Let's move on to the next part, the wins. Let's just label it, matches played. And the next one will start with the wins. Now we answered, we did the number line for this in question B, where we had the minimum was zero, then Q1 was one, Q2 was two, Q3 was three, and the maximum was six. So let's write that down. Let's work in blue, uh, pink. So our minimum was zero. Our Q1 was one. Q2 was two. Q3 was three. And our maximum was six. 
So what's our number line going to start with? It's going to start with the number before 0, which is negative 1. And it's going to end with the number after 6, which is 7. Let's draw the number line. Once again, a beautifully straight number line. And we'll draw and label all of the points. Negative 1. Can negative 1 occur in the set of data? No, it can't. It's just really there to decorate the graph. Then we've got 0, got 1, 2, 3, and it goes on for a while. Be careful when you are labeling these graphs. You would be surprised how many people forget how to count in an exam. So check that you have only got one one, and then two follows it, and then three, four, so on and so forth. Our minimum was zero, so a little dot above zero. Our maximum was six, a little dot above six. And then our quartiles occurred at one, line down at one, at two, and then at three. We join up our box, and we join up our whiskers, and there we have the number of wins. Now you'll see that this is quite symmetrical because it's got the same amount of space on either side of the box. So from the quartile, the second quartile, to the first quartile is the same distance from the second quartile to the third quartile. We call this symmetrically the symmetrical data. Let's find out what the third part asked for. Goal scored against. Now once again we did this back in C. Goal scored against Argentina, and we have our number line, and we worked out that our Q1 was 3, Q2, 4, Q3, 7, as well as our minimum was 2, and our maximum was 11. Let's draw this box plot, starting with the number line. Let's just confirm it is goals scored against. Goals against, and the number line, get it straight, and we must still quickly write down what our minimum and our maximum were. Our min was 2, Q1 was 3, Q2 was 4, and Q3 was 7, with our maximum being 11. We're going to start our number line at 1, and we're going to end our number line at 12. Let's start at 1, 2, 3, seven, Eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. Our minimum is at two, our maximum is at eleven, our quartiles are at three, at four, and then we have a huge gap until seven, and we join up our box. We join up our lines, and there is our box and whisker plot. Now, this box, you'll notice, has a bigger space on the right-hand side, and we call this skewed to the right or positively skewed. Let's take a look at our box plots quickly. The space, let's do it in a different color. The space between here and here. Sorry, let's choose orange. Between here and here is our interquartile range. If we wanted to find out what our interquartile range was numerically, we would take Q3, which is 6, and we would minus Q1, which is 3. So our interquartile range would be 3. Let's look over here. Our Q1 was 1, and our Q3 was 3, so that means that our interquartile range is going to be 3 minus 1, which is 2. And lastly, 
7 minus 3 will be our interquartile range over here, which is 4. Which had the greatest inter interquartile range? Definitely the goals against. Okay. We've now gone over five number summary and quite a lot of depth. We talk, we've talked about interquartile range and we've shown you box and whisker plots. Let's look at how to decipher what our boxes are telling us. On to the next question. We've still got the same table and it says E, by referring to the box and whisker plots, comment on the distribution of the data. So let's look at the first one. It was the matches played. Now, the more matches you play, the more successful you've been in the tournament. So the fact that their median is five matches is pretty good. And that more than half of their data, well, half of their data lies above five matches shows that they have been doing well in these tournaments. Uh, and that, as we said earlier, is called negatively skewed. When it's skewed to the left, it's negatively skewed. Let's look at the wins. Well, the wins are quite closely clustered around two. That means that half of the years, they have had two or more wins or less wins. So most of them have been two because this is our median. Then they've had one more than two or one less than two with half of the data being on either side of that as well. Remember the quartile range, the interquartile range represents half of the data in the middle. And the last one, this is skewed to the right and it is goals against. Now what that means is half of the 14 tournaments, four goals were scored against Argentina per tournament. So that is at half of the tournaments or the median, halfway between the data, four goals or more or less, roughly around four goals were scored. Have we answered it sufficiently? For six marks, you need to state whether it's symmetrically skewed, skewed to the left or skewed to the right, or whether it's positive or negatively skewed. And then you need to talk a little bit about the data. So say whether they played well or whether they played badly, whether their defense needs a little bit of work. Whatever you can interpret from the data, you need to put down in words. And remember, it doesn't need to be hugely mathematical. Think about it in real life. Think about Argentina playing these games. If they've played a lot of games, it means they've been successful in the tournament, and you need to write that down. So think about what you're doing. Okay, now we've looked at all of the five number summaries, how to do the box plots, interquartile ranges, as well as how to interpret the information. Let's move on to the next question. Question 1F. 1F says calculate the mean for the number of matches played over the 14 tournaments. Now they want the number of matches played. So number of matches played. Let's go up and we see here's the column we want. We need to add all of those together and then divide by 14. Why do we divide by 14? Because there are 14 sets of data here. So there are 14 numbers written down. We add them together and we divide by them. Let's start by writing down the top numbers, 5, 3, 5, 4. So 5 plus 3 plus 5 plus 4. Let's go to the next numbers, 7, 7, 5, 7 plus 7 plus 7, 5 and 7. And the Last six numbers, how do I know there's six? Because there are 14 sets of data. Six, four, three, three, one, five. Six, four, three, three, one, five. Now we're going to add all of those numbers together and then divide by 14. Using our calculator, of course, because as humans, we make silly errors. So let's start with the, uh, move the calculator. It doesn't matter. Okay. As long as you don't move it, where do you want to put it? Uh, where is the start? I need to, I'll have to move it to the other side so that I can see the rest of the numbers. Use your notes. Yes. 
Okay, so they don't need to know that I'm uh, reading from it. Okay. Oh well, yeah, I am. I am. Yes. Okay. Do must I put it down again? Yeah. Okay. Okay, we're all human and we make mistakes, so let's rather do this by using a calculator and keep track of the numbers you've added in. Remember that you need to be on comp mode, not on stat mode. So press number one and then you'll see it says D and math at the top. That's what you want. Let's start with the first numbers. Five plus three plus five plus four plus seven and another seven and five and another seven, six, four, three, three, one, and five. It's always a good idea to go back and check that you've got them all there. Count them as you go along. And there we have an answer of 65. What do we want to do with that answer? We want to divide it by 14. Now you will get a mark for writing down 65 over here. So write down is equals to 65 divided by 14. And then in the next line, we can do 65 divided by 14 will give us an answer of 65 over 14. No surprise there. We press our SD to change it to a decimal and we get 4,64 something, something, something. Now let's see if the question has specified how many decimal places. No, it hasn't. So let's go with the standard one decimal place of four comma six. If it had been four comma six five, then the six would have rounded up to a seven. But because it's four or less, it will stay the number it is. And that is how we find the mean for the number of matches played over the 14 tournaments. Let's go on to the next question. Complete the following table. Now here we have a table that's got our individual x value. That's our individual value. Individual. Minus our mean. And the x with a line on top is the mean. So if we're going to calculate this, uh, Let's see if green shows up nicely. We're going to say 5 minus 4.6. Where did I get 4.6 from? I got 4.6 from our mean calculation over here. 4.6. So 5 minus 4.6 gives us an answer of 0, 0,4. Let's do the next one. 3 minus 4.6 is going to give us a negative answer. And it will be negative 1,6. Let's go through them all. 5 minus 4.6, we have done it above already. And we get 0, 0,4. 4 minus 4.6. And we get negative 0, 0,6. You get the general idea. So we're minusing all of them. It's a good idea to do this with your calculator, but because I'm super intelligent, I can do it just in my head. I'm going to use the same set of data over there. It becomes 2.4. 5 I've done before, so I'm going to just write it down again. 0, 0,4. I've done 7 already, so it's 2, 0,4. 6 have I done? No, I haven't, so let's do it. 6 minus 4.6 is going to be 1.4. And 4 minus 4.6 is negative 0, 0,6. 3 is negative 1, 1,6. And again, negative 1, 1,6. I haven't done 1 yet, so let's do that. 1 minus 4.6 gives us negative 3 comma 6, and I have done 5 before, I get 4.0. Now often I get the question, so, why... Sorry, you said 4.0. Ah. 0 .4. Must I, can I just say it again? Absolutely. Okay. 
and with 5 you get 0 0.4. Now often I get the question, why don't you just add them up and find the average of that? Well the truth is, if you add all of these up you're going to get the answer 0, especially if you've done it correctly. These calculations are the difference from the mean. So if the mean is accurate and if you've done all of these calculations correctly, you should get an answer of 0. The reason we square it is to make all of the negatives positive. Later on, we're going to square root it to get a more valuable piece of data. Let's square it. OK, the next bracket or the next column says x minus the mean squared. So we're going to take 0, 0,4 and square it, and we're going to get 0, 0,16. I do recommend that you do this on your calculator. It can get confusing. Negative 1.6 squared, well 16 squared is 256, so this is going to be 2,56. The next one, 0, 0,16, because 0 0.4 squared is 16. Uh, 0 0.6 squared is 0, 0,36, because 6 squared is 36. Our next one, 2.4 squared, is going to give us 5,76. And we've got it again, so 5,76 again. Now when we finish doing this table, we're going to add them all up. There's the sigma sign to say we're going to add it all up. And then 0,4 squared is 0, 0,16. 2,4 squared is once again 5,76. And 1,4 squared is going to be 1,96. Negative 0, 0,6 is going to be 0, 0,36. 2, 0,56. And again, 2, 0,56. We've worked this out before. Then we've got negative 3.6, which gives us 12,96. And the last one is the one we started with. 0, 0,4 gives us 0, 0,16. When we add these all together, we're going to get a number, and maybe we should do that on the calculator. We'll pull it out and clear it from our last calculation. Our first number was 0, 0,16. The second one, 2.56. Uh, and you see, when you make a mistake, you can just press the delete button. And 0, 0,36. 5,76, another 5,76, and 0, 0,16, 5,76. does go on a bit. You've got to make sure that you get every number in correctly. One digit put into the calculator incorrectly will give you the wrong answer and teachers aren't really fond of wrong answers. It means they have to recalculate the question themselves. So rather make your teacher happy by being careful with your calculator work and getting it right. One six. And we should get an answer of 41.24 and there's our 41.24. So we're going to write that in. Forty-one point two four. Okay, we've done the first part of our standard deviation question. I can almost guarantee that the next question is going to ask us to complete the formula. So what we've done is we've found the mean, we've then taken each individual set of data and subtracted the mean from it. So it's the individual data first minus the mean, and then we've taken that answer, we've squared it, and the last step is to add them all together. This is a section that's meant to be easy. If you study it, you will get it right. The problem is the clever people always think they're too good to study this kind of thing, that it's too easy and they'll remember it when they're in the exam. They don't. You've got to pretend that you are stupid and so you practice and you practice and you practice so that you know it off by heart. It will pay off in the end. It's a good set of marks to get. Let's see if the next question does ask for standard deviation. Okay. The next question says, use the table to calculate the standard deviation for the matches played. Well, let's start by inserting the formula for the standard deviation. So standard deviation 
is equals to the square root of sigma x minus the mean squared divided by the number of terms there are. We know this value, it's circled in a different color, we know that value from the previous question. So we're going to substitute that in. Previous question. Have I spelled previous correctly? Yes. Okay. <laughs> it's pick up. Okay. Uh, action. From the previous question. And the number is going to be the number of tournaments play, played. Tournaments played. In other words, it's going to be 14. Let's look back. Our previous answer was 41,24. So let's substitute that in. SD is equals to 41,24 divided by 14. And let's use our calculators. Clear it from the previous calculation. We're still on degrees and we're still on math. And type it in. We've got a square root and we've got the fraction. 41.24 divided by 14 gives us an answer of 1,7. 1, 6, blah, 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 blah. Once again, we're going to keep the 7, 7 because the digit after it is just less than 4, well, 4 or less. So our answer is then going to be 1, 7. Now the standard deviation is 1.7. This doesn't really mean much unless it's put into context. The mean was 4.6, and this represented the average number of games that Argentina had played in each tournament. So in one tournament, they would have played 4.6, but in another tournament, they would have played slightly more, up to 1.7 more games than 4.6. And in the next tournament, maybe less 1.7 games than the tournament before. So the standard deviation is the deviation from the average. You have the average, and then you have the little bit up and the little bit down. Let's move on to the next question. Question one still. Using your calculator, calculate the standard deviation for the goals and the goals for and the goals against. So let's just underline that. Goals for and goals against Argentina. Comment on your findings. Now let's just circle those. We're starting with the goals for. Okay, this question has asked for us to use our calculators. It's really important that you remember the steps that you need to use your calculator. Otherwise, you have to go back to the table method and do it manually, which is easy, but a lot of work. On your calculator, it'll take less than two minutes. Let's do it on the calculator. Start by calling it up. And we've still got our previous calculation, so let's clear it. Now, we are going to do standard deviation on the calculator, and that means we need to change the mode. So we start by clicking mode, and we go to 2, because 2 is stats. Then we need to press 1 for variable, and we're going to start by entering in all of these digits, so 11. Once we're finished entering in 11, we press equals, then 2 and equals 10. Carry on, make sure that you get all of them in. Don't skip out any. So I've just done five, I need to do 14. That was a good one. Eight and 15, that's even more goals scored. Nine, four, a relatively unsuccessful tournament at two goals scored four, and then five, two and the last one which was the first one in Uruguay where they scored 18 goals. Now that we've entered in all of that information we need to tell the calculator we, fin we have finished by pressing AC. We then press shift up at the top, one for stat and then we want number four for variable and we press number three for that x sigma n which gives us 
this funny screen. Once you've gotten there, you press equals, and our standard deviation is 4.9. Let's write that down. Standard deviation, and I'm just going to write it down over here, is 4.9. Now let's start with uh, the other side, goals against. Once again using our calculators. Let's start right from the beginning with mode stat just to practice it. Now that we've pressed stat, we need to press number one and then we can start entering the data. Start with three, two, your equals functions as an enter button on your calculator and remember sharp will be different so check your owner's manual or these notes for tips on how to use it 11 2 3 and 10 3 and 9 now that we've entered all of the sets of data we know we've entered enough because we've gotten to number 14 and we've got 9 these were goals against uh, Argentina scored Let's see what the answer is. We start by pressing AC to say we finished, then we press shift, we press stat, which is number one, we press number four, and we press number three, and equals. And we get 2.85. Now remember earlier I was talking about rounding off. If it's four or less, you keep the eight. If it's five or more, you round it up, so 2.85 becomes 2.9. Let's write that down. Standard deviation over here is 2.9. The second part of the question asks us to comment on our findings. In the goal scored against, we have a smaller standard deviation of 2.9. And the goal scored for, in other words, the goals that Argentina scored, we have a larger standard deviation. That means in one game, Argentina could have scored very little goals, and in another, quite a lot. A large gap between the mean and the standard deviations. What you can also say is their offense is probably quite good because there is a small deviation around the mean. In other words, it's consistent. They're always there, they're always defending. Or if you look at the, at it the other way, maybe they're not always defending and there's a small standard deviation because the mean is so high. But we know them to be a good team. Let's move on to the next question. Okay, question two says, the ages of the final 23 players selected by coach Carlos Pereira to play for Bafana Bafana in 2010 FIFA World Cup are provided below. Now we've got quite a young group over here, the oldest being 30. Oh wait, we've got a 33 year old. Uh, let's read the question. The ages of the players are to be grouped into class intervals. Complete the following table. The class intervals and ages, the frequency and the cumulative frequency. Class intervals is a nice way of grouping a set of numbers. Let's for, say for instance you're talking about weight ranges. Now you can have a whole lot of people in the class and someone will be 59.3 and the other person will be 59.4. Now they're two different weights but we can group them into a class interval so we can put everyone who's between 50 and 60 kilograms together in one class interval and then between 61 and 70 kilograms between in another class interval. So that means everyone who weighs 50 kilograms would then be in the first interval and so on and so forth. You can do the same with ages. So in the first class interval we have a, from 16 to 20 in the second one so on and so forth. The cumulative frequency is the number of people that are in that class interval and before that class interval. So let's look at it in more depth to find out more. Okay, now the first one they want is between 16 and 20. You'll notice that they say before 20. So 20 year olds aren't included in this frequency. Let's see what we can find. We're looking for anyone in their teens. There's a 28, 26, 25. I see no one in their teens. So I'm going to put the frequency as zero. In the next one, between 20 and 24. 
So we've got 28, too high, 26, too high. Carry on going out, 20 down at least, 25, still too high. 25, still too high, but here we have a 24 and a 22. That's two, another 22 and a 23 and a 24. And I'm not meant to include the 24s. Can we start from the top? You can. Okay. Just click undo. Okay. Sorry. It's beginning to feel a lot like supper time. <laughs> okay, can I start from the top? Yep, you can. Okay. So you're going to just start ticking off now. Yes. And action. Okay, we're looking for people between the ages of 20 and 24, but not including 24. So we look down. Here's 24, but that's too high. We want below 24. So 22, that's one. 22 and 23, that's three people. And our frequency for that stage is therefore three. Let's move on to the next one, uh, which is between 24. So you can be equal to 24, but less than 28. So less than 28 there we go one two three four five six seven eight nine there should be nine over there and you'll notice i'm crossing them off as i put them down because if i leave one off i need to know where to add it in now between 28 and 32, but not equal to 32. Let's look. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's eight. And the last one, between 32 and less than 36. So those have been crossed off. There is 32, that's one, two, and three. Mm, it seems to be quite a young team. So we've got no people between 16 and 20, and we've got few people between 32 and 36, but quite a large number of people between 24 and 32. Cumulative frequency is when we add up our frequencies together. So how many people are 20 years old or less than 20 years old? There are zero people 20 years old or less than. How many people are less than 24 years old? There are three people. Three plus zero is three. How many people are less than 28? Well, nine plus three plus zero is going to give us 12. How many people are less than 32? Eight plus nine plus three gives us 20. And lastly, how many people are less than 36 years old? That's the full team, which is 23 players. And there we go. They're all there and accounted for. We haven't left out anyone. All 23 are less than 36 years old, but only 12 players are less than 28 years old. Let's go to the next question. Uh, the question says, on the diagram provided below, draw a cumulative frequency curve for this data. Now this cumulative frequency curve has a funny name. It's called an ogive, but spelt with a G. It's got a curve that starts at the bottom and then goes up and then curves at the top as well. It's kind of like a stretched out S. If you've done it correctly, you should see this curve quite nicely. Let's plot our points. Remember that when you are plotting them, you always go for the highest number in the interval class. So let's go look at the interval class and look at our cumulative frequency and form our points to plot. Our cumulative frequency was zero and our other coordinate is 20. This will give us a point of 20, zero. So our x coordinate is going to be 20 from here, and our y coordinate is going to be 0 from here. Our next will be 24 and 3. Then we'll have 
28. Oh, that's messy. 28 and 9. 32 and 20. And lastly, 36 and 23. Now we've got to remember all of those points as we go to the next page. And we'll plot our first point at, let's just check it again, 0 and 20. So along here they've done it as a graph for us, which is quite nice. It means we don't have to waste time. We put our first dot at 20 and 0. Our second dot went at 24 and 3. Our third dot went at 28 and 12. So 28 and 12, roughly over there. Our next was at 32. So looks like it's on the 11 line. Yes, it is. Can I? You can just go back. So just okay. Undo it and then just start again. Uh, action. Okay. Our next point is on 28 and at 12 over there. Almost our last point was at 32 and 20. Oh. 32 is this line over here, and 20 is up over here. And our last point was at 36, so let's make sure we've got the right line. It's the second last line, and at 23. Now we're going to join up these lines, creating an ogive. So it goes up, up to the next point, get a nice curve into it. Now remember that small little pink dot I drew over here was just to remind me where the other line was. There we go. And let's move it over here. Remember an ogive has a curve that looks like that. Does ours look like that? Yes, it does. It's a good ogive. Let's move on to the next question. Uh, the next question says, the ages of the players are to be grouped in class intervals, which we've done. Use your graph to read off approximate values for the quartiles. Now you'll remember with quartiles, it's like folding a page in half and then folding it in half again. So you've got to find the middle and then you've got to find the top half of the middle or half of the top half and half of the bottom half. In the same way, we're going to do it with the cumulative frequency graph. We're going to look for that middle point across we're going to look for the three quarters point at the top and the one quarter point at the bottom. We're going to draw lines across so that it's fairly accurate at what those values will be. This is a typical exam question, so you need to be able to do it and you need to be able to read off graphs accurately. Let's go back to our graph. So it said read off approximate values for the quartiles. Let's go back. Halfway between 23 and zero is going to be 11 and a half. How did I work that out? 23 divided by two is equals to 11 and a half. So this is our position of our median, of our median value. Remember small, medium, large? Median is in the middle, not the middle. So median value. Let's do it in a different, well, let's actually do it with a line. And we'll make it green. So at 11 and a half, which is roughly over there, it's going to be that value over here. If we're going to draw it down, we'll see that it runs to between 24 and 28. Now that's that value. Let's move on to what's between 11 and a half and zero. So 11 and a half divided by two is going to give you uh, 5.75 roughly, which will be just before six over there. Remember they're looking for approximate values. 
and that will be our Q1 value. And then our last value will be 5.76 above 11, which is going to give us a value of just over 17, 17.25. We draw our line across and we meet the line. And where we meet the line, we're going to draw a line down to the x-axis to discover what that value is. So let's look at those values. We'll write it in green. Our Q1 is going to be roughly 24, 28, 25, 26, 27. I would say it's roughly 26. Our Q2 value is going to be roughly 27. And our Q3 value is going to be roughly 30. OK, this is a good time to talk about approximate values. Now, we've read the values of our graph. So the answers are going to be marked according to our graph. The approximate values in the memo say that they are 25, 28, and 31. Ours are very close to those three values, as well as our graph being correct. So our answers will also be correct. You've got to work through with the question. So the teacher will do the same when they are marking your work. Let's move on to question three. And question three says, complete the table and then use the table to calculate the standard deviation. Once again, we're working with class intervals between 20 and 24, and so it looks like we're working with their ages again. The frequency is 3, 9, 8, and 3. The midpoints, what is a midpoint? A midpoint is the point between 20 and 24. So the midpoint between 20 and 24 is 22. Midpoint between 24 and 28 is 26. Between 28 and so on and so forth. So those are all our midpoints. We use them to work out an average age in the class interval. So to do that, we have to multiply the midpoint by the frequency. So 22 times by 3 is what this next column is asking for. Uh, so 22 times 3 gives us 66. 3 times 22 is easy, but let's go to the next one, to the calculator for the next one. You'll see that I'm still in stat mode, so I need to make sure I get out of that first by pressing mode and pressing number 1. Then I'll get the right answers. So 9 times by 26, which are our next two numbers, gives us an answer of 233 which we then write, or 234 at least, which we then write down over here, 234. The next one is going to be 8 times by 30. Should have been able to do that in my head. But anyway, it's 240. 240. The next one, 34 times by 3, I'm not going to try in my head, I'm just going to do it over here. 34 times by 3 gives me an answer of 102. And let's write that down, 102. Now the last part of here is asking for the average. How do I know it's the average? Because the x with the line over is the average, or the mean. Remember our maths averages are mean, that's how we remember it. How do we find the average? We add up all of these and we divide by the set number of data. How much data was there? There were 23 players and we got that by adding together the frequencies. So 3 plus 9 is 12 plus 8 is 20 plus 3 is 23. So we're going to add this together, find the sum of it, and then we're going to divide by 23 to get the mean. Let's use our calculators to do that. Clear the last calculation. 66 plus 234 plus 240 plus 102 gives us 642. That's not our final answer, though. We found the sum. We now need to divide by 23. 
divide by 23, because remember there were 23 ages or 23 players, and the average age is going to be 27.9 years old. And we're going to leave it as that, not round anymore. So 27.9 years old. Okay, the next part asks for us to take the midpoint and minus our average. So the midpoint is 22. The average is 27.9, uh, and 22 minus 27.9 is going to be minus 5.9. Let's do the next one. 26 minus 27.9 is going to be minus 1.9. 30 minus 27.9 is going to be 2.1. Remember, if you're feeling unconfident doing this, use your calculator to get it right. And the last one, 34 minus 27.9, is going to give us 6.1. The next part asks us to square this. So we found this value. We now need to square it over there. And for that, I'm going to use the calculator. Remember that when you're squaring a negative number, it needs to be in brackets. Otherwise, the calculator will only square the number and leave the negative in front. So negative 5.9 squared gives us an answer of 34.81. So we're going to t write that in. 34,81. The next one, negative 1.9 squared. Once again, using the calculator, open brackets, negative 1.9 squared will give us 3.61. Let's write that down. 3.61. Do you notice that as we get closer to the average, our values become smaller? And as we move further away, they'll become bigger again. Let's square 2.1. Now that it's positive, we can just square it normally. 2.1 squared will give us 4.41. 4.41. And the last one, 6.1 squared is going to be 37.21. So, oh, 37.21. One. And there are all of the squared amounts. Okay, at this point, what we've found is the difference between the midpoint and the average, but we haven't taken into account how many people fall into each interval. So the last step is to multiply the frequency by this new amount we've found. So if there are three people in the first class interval, we'd multiply the variance by three to get the real value. Let's do that in the last column. The last column is quite clear in what it wants. It wants the F value, which is frequency, multiplied by this value that's in our last column. I'm going to use a calculator to do this. We've got 34.81 uh, times by 3. Let's type it in. 34.81 times by 3 gives us an answer of 104.43. So 104.43. The next one, 3.61 times by 9. 3.61 times by 9 gives us 32.49. And let's write that in. 32.49. 4.41 times by 8 will give us 35.28 and the last one 37.21 times by 3 37.21 times by 3 gives us an answer of 111.63 111.63.
At this point, we've completed the table, but there's still another part of the question. They want us to work out the standard deviation using this table. We've gone about it a different way. We, we've used the interval classes. We found the midpoints. We found the averages. We've then minus the midpoint and the average, and then we've multiplied by the frequency. So now we need to use this uh, over the number of sets of data, which was 23, and square root it to get our standard deviation. Let's do that. Now to calculate the standard deviation, we need to add all of the values in the last column together. And this is going to give us our sigma value. So if we were to write down this formula, it would look something like this. SD is equals to, and remember, sigma is just the sum of. So we're doing the sum of F times by the M minus the average squared over the number, which was 23. OK, so we need to first add that top value all together, find the sum of that. And this will be 23 because there are 23 players. There we go. So let's fill that in, starting by adding all of the values. So I'm laying out my formula for me quickly. Let's go up and call up our calculator and start adding them. 104.43 plus 32.49 plus 35.28 plus 111.63 equals a rather large number, 283,83. 283,83. Let's remember that as we scroll down. And it's going to be 283,83. What was the bottom number? Of course, we'll put a 2 in there. 283,83. What was the bottom number we were going to put in? It was the number 23 to represent the 23 players. At this point, please use your calculator. Don't try and work this out in your head. Just do the square root, find out the answer, and the world will be at peace. Let's go. 283.83 divided by 23 is equals to 3.51. Let's round it off to 3.5. Uh, pin. So our standard deviation is equals to 3.5. Now the reason why this question was so different was because of our class intervals. We needed to find the midpoint of the class intervals and then multiply it by the frequency, then find the average, then subtract the midpoint with the average, square that value and multiply it by the frequency again. And that's how we found our standard deviation was 3.5. In a previous question, we found out our average age was roughly 27 years old. I think it was 27.9. This standard deviation means that people were either within 3.5 years older than 27.9 years old or 3.5 years younger than 27.9. Let's move on to question B. Now we'll see in question B that it's pretty much a re repetition of question A. We've calculated it before. So if you do get this where you have calculated before, you can just write the answer down. SD is equals to 3.5. And you can write C above so that your teacher will know that all of your calculations are in question B. Moving on to question C. Now use your calculator to verify your answer. This is going to be slightly different to the previous standard deviation question we did on the calculator because we're working with class intervals. So we're going to do slightly different methods. Please have a pen and paper ready so that you can take notes as we go along. OK, we have our values in front of us. Let's call up the calculator. And let's start by checking that it is on stat number two. So we pressed mode and stat. And then we still want number one. We're then going to go to shift and setup. 
and we want to go down to stat number three. So you're called up and you get the first screen. You don't want that. You want to go down to number three on stat. And we want on, frequency on, because we're working with frequency table. We've got the class intervals and the frequency. So we press number one. And now we're going to enter the midpoints first. The midpoints were 22. Let's press equals and 26, press equals, 30, and press equals, and 34, press equals. Now you'll see that the frequency is not what we want it to be. They've listed all our frequencies as one. We want the first one to be a frequency of three, and press equals. The second one to be a frequency of nine, the third one, eight, and the fourth one, three. Now that we've done that, we've got to press AC to show that we're done. We press shift, and we press one, and then we press number four. And once again, we're looking for number three. Press equals, and there we have our answer of 3.5. And that would be verifying that our answer is correct. Now that we've come to the end of our questions, let's recap on what we've gone through. We've gone through the five number summary, which had your minimum, your maximum, and your three quartiles. This led to the box and whisker plot. And you have to remember how to interpret it. Is it negatively skewed or positively skewed or symmetrical? After this, we started talking about cumulative frequency and we drew the ogive from it. And you need to remember how to find your quartiles from that graph. And then we did standard deviation in two different methods. We did it when we had a set of data and we were able to type it into the calculator normally. And then we did it with class intervals where we had to find the midpoint and then find the standard deviation from that. This section is meant to be easy marks. So if you practice it, you will get it right. And you must practice it because everyone needs those easy marks.